that's what sports is if you're not finding some type of edge that's not yeah. really in the rule you book ain't cheating, you ain't if you're not finding a loophole you're Tyler doing something nice. it's true yeah. Yeah. what's up everybody welcome to another episode of double coverage with the McCordy twins we're on episode 16 uh, I guess it's officially the off season. We have a special guest here, Trish Kennedy, winner at our casino night to come hang out. Uh, a- with, AKA the Patriots mom. Yes, with Dev and myself uh, on our podcast. Before we get into all of that, want to welcome you back, of course. As you guys know, you can catch up on the podcast on iTunes or you can go to YouTube, if, however you want to choose to view Mama, it. Mama, we made it! <laughs> and if you can't find, if you don't find us there, you can always go on social media instagram twitter facebook at mccordy twins we're always there shout out to our partners here at double coverage boston medical center embrace kids foundation we've all come together to tackle sickle cell disease you can learn more at tackle sickle cell dot org and obviously dev is sporting it but shout out to our, our partners at norma tech dev i'm in, I'm actually, in off season mode he's actually rocking uh the recovery boots uh woody's recovering for i do not know because we are no longer <laughs> Playing, Bro, which, I've been on I've been on dad duty heavy last week. Dad duty heavy. Up and downstairs. Pick up, drop off, crying babies. My daughter's been waking up around one o'clock every I mean, night. We don't really really need to get into. All right, we'll get night. into it later. Normatechrecovery.com for more information. You can go pick yours up. He's not gonna inflate them to the max. Uh, this is just kind of. I am to the max. This is max. All right. Yeah, so, I got ten minutes on here. Okay, they're blowing up as you see. So he's gonna show you how to get that done. So happy to have. You on here with your boots recovering. Shout out Norma Tech, man. I would put my boots and, on. And shout out Norma Tech. This is special, man. It, it even has double coverage in here on the system. I don't know if y'all can get that, but. Yeah, know, we're doing it big. I would have mine on, but right now I am currently recovering from a little off-season surgery. So I will not be putting my boots on. It will not um, coincide with my groin right now. So at some what, point. Uh, what happened when you woke up? Did you want to fight? Like, were you angry? When were I woke up sad? from surgery? Yeah. No, I was just there, a little nauseous, um, just there. Mm. Yeah. Did you throw up? I did, a few times. Oh, oh that's gross. Yeah. Need that's to gross. know. Yeah, yeah, gross. You asked. Did you brush your teeth? Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay. Daily. Your poor wife had to deal with you being yuck mouth. Bur- breaking news, Joe Burrow and LSU are national champs. Great. Trish, Trish, were you rooting for LSU or Clemson? LSU. Okay. Winner. Trish knows how to pick a winner. I okay. do. Did I'm very good at that. I, I actually didn't watch the whole game. I watched, like, the first quarter. I was going for Clemson. Um, <laughs> so, in the beginning, you were probably a little happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my team, Chaplin from Tennessee, is now a Clemson uh, Reggie. So, I was going for them. I had a little personal uh, relationship involved. but That it helped them. Yeah, I turned it again. I turned it off in the first quarter, watched the movie, turned back at halftime. I was like, dang, Clemson still got 17. It, it wasn't their fault, though. LSU just has too many yeah. good players. It was just, I mean, mm. one of the best players on the field for both teams was a true freshman. Yeah, Stingley, the quarterback, that, yeah. true freshman. Ball. I mean, LSU, I mean, it didn't matter who they threw the ball to. It was going to be tough to tackle them. I mean, and LSU honestly probably could have ran the ball for 40 times and still won the game because the running back mm-hmm. was that good as well. So, I mean, it was a good game, though. It was back and forth. It's just like once LSU got rolling and the defense got a couple stops, they were just scoring like that. So, Joe Burrow is definitely the real deal. Um, gets the Tom Brady comparisons, but he is a lot faster than Tom Brady. <laughs> that is for sure. He's a lot faster. Oh. Alex Carrere, um, relieved duties, Red Sox. Mm. Not, not a good thing to be involved in. Um, something here in the New England area we, you know, unfortunately know too well of being associated with these scandals and cheating things that the people have gotten used all to allegations to, all allegations um but Carrera is currently waiting for punishment so this might not be so much of an allegation so this was, but this is this is a discussion i had today we talked about in the training room mm-hmm. so they say the astros were doing this for a while i would assume now there's been guys that have played for the astros and gone on to other teams if you were a player and you're on a team and this team is doing a ton of cheating you leave you play against your old team when you get to your new team, you're going to have told somebody about the things you did. Valid. Why has this never come out up until this point? This leads me to believe that what went on in Houston is this just a league-wide thing. 
does every team do this? Because why had nobody talking about players leave and free agency mm-hmm. release? All, that happens all the time. You go to new teams. If you're on a team, not to say you'd get to the new team and rat them out, but you'd get to the new team and be like, hey, we're missing out. We should be doing this. But no one ever talked about it. So it led me to believe, like, maybe this is just something that goes on on every team. But when you do it on the biggest stage and you get caught, obviously, punishment follows. Baseball always needs press. Good press, bad press, they need it. I mean, NBA is soaring. NFL is always at the top. I feel like baseball always needs something for people to get involved in. I don't know if cheating helps that. Because, you know, people watch and they want, you know, equal playing field. It'll and bounce all back. That. You remember with all the home runs and all of that and Barry Bonds and McGuire? It'll bounce back. But the crazy thing is this is such a big thing. Like the Astros won the World Series, then the Red Sox won. And it's not even on the news that much. Like yeah. as sports. Mm-hmm. It just does baseball. Where, just Deflate, doesn't... where Deflate Gate was on every channel as if y'all were out there throwing and beach balls. And we made it to the something. Super Bowl. So like every question. Yeah. I remember opening night. Um, not even the big night, but the first night we got there, they made, I think it was like three or four of us do interviews. That's all we answered the whole night. Now, Trish, as a fan, does that change? Like, if you're a Red Sox fan, does you look at it and be like, oh, I'm not rooting for them anymore? Does it change? You no. Know, everybody knows they all do it. Yeah. Like that, exactly. Everybody knows. Exactly. That's what sports is. If you're not finding some type of edge that's not yeah. really in the rule you book. You ain't cheating. You ain't trying. If you're not finding a loophole, you're Tyler doing something wrong. It's true. Yeah. Larry Fitzgerald. The ageless wonder is returning for another year in 2020. Um, <laughs> Here in New England, they always talk about the rumors of one year. One year was close. They say Fitz was close to coming to New England and playing with Tom. So mm. uh, we can end those rumors for this year, yeah. obviously. It's impressive. I mean, he's, I mean yeah. he's still out there killing. And hopefully Arizona continues to improve. New quarterback from last year. Who knows? Mm. Still got Chandler Jones, man. NFC. Uh, defensive player of the year, one of the uh, writers, Stephon Gilmore, defensive player of the year in the AFC. Yeah. So, can uh, we talk about Chandler? Yeah, of course. definitely. We love Chandler just here. for a moment because yeah. he's such a great guy. That's anything else you want to say about him? His hair is pretty bad. His, his <laughs> yeah, he should <laughs> he go ball. Ball. Yeah, It's tough. It's tough. No, no, him. no. What can can black people get the transplant? Yes, they can. Yeah. You can. Yeah, yeah. I, we, well, why wouldn't he do that? He's so attractive. You gotta embrace. You gotta that, embrace the that's, ball. That's that's definitely an opinionated uh, <laughs> statement. I used to always tell him how he was just so unattractive. I told him he was ugly a lot. That's I, probably why he's so good now. I he's I, I thought he was a handsome man. <laughs> he still I still talk to him every once in a while. Well, you tell him, Mama T misses him. I will. I definitely will. We had a good time with him. <laughs> he's a good guy. On the opposite side, Fitz returns. Keekley, Antonio Gates, call it quits. Retirement. Mm. Are both Hall of Famers? Yeah, definitely. For sure. We'll start with Antonio Gates. Long career. 16 years, I think. Is yeah, it? top mm-hmm. of the charts in all tight end categories. Him, Gonzalez, Gronkowski. Like, it's so many. Like, they're, they're just blown away. Uh, so, it, it's, it's great to see him, you know, retire, I think. Uh, I still remember my second year. We're playing the Chargers uh, here at Gillette. And we got the game plan for the week, and we're playing, like, all man-to-man coverage. And they're like, the defensive end, before you rush, you're going to stand in front of Gates, and you're going to hit Gates. You're going to jam at the line. Then the linebacker, you're going to take them, jam them inside leverage. And then the safety, you're going to take them outside leverage. And I remember walking into the game like, (laughs) what about Vincent Jackson and Malcolm Floyd? We just got to act like they don't exist. We triple team Antonio Gates. And, I mean, obviously it worked. I think he had either – he had maybe one catch the whole game. Did you win? Yeah, we won. Okay. But uh, I got scorched. I got scorched by Vincent Jackson, so ah, well. it wasn't a great individual game, but the ah. team won. So you're right. I was happy. Way to put it on the line. For but the it line. let me know how good Antonio Gates was. Yeah, he's a beast. Luke Keekley, uh, I think 28 years old, leaves the game. Now, he battled um, concussions and stuff, so um, a Boston mm-hmm. College legend. I remember no matter, I felt like no matter what stadium, I played on multiple teams, no matter what stadium we played against the Panthers, if Luke Luke Keekly made a tackle, the stands (laughs) just started chanting, Luke. I didn't think it was going to happen here. I was like, they're they're not going to do that. Boston College. I was like, so as soon as, and he had like. They definitely did it in Nashville. He had like 14 tackles in our game. So it was a lot of Luke. Beast. (laughs) When you look at his stats, I mean, he played eight years. He's like a seven-time Pro Bowler, five-time All-Pro. Like, I mean, his his, his numbers are ridiculous. So 
Um, and, and it brings us back to the same conversation. We started probably our first episode with Andrew Luck retiring of just how much I think players realize there's so much life after football. Um, it goes back to take care of your chicken, take care of your body, and take care of your mentals. Marshawn Lynch, you can't say it any better than that. And guys are starting to realize part of doing that is sometimes walking away from the game. Yeah, I mean, it's sad to see for everyone, I think, as fans, mm -hmm. when you watch these guys. Because when you watch us, it's like, man, these guys are gladiators. They go out there. We find out after the season, surgeries. I saw a report that Julian had, you know, broken cartilage in his – so, like, people read this stuff and they're like, dang, these guys play with that? Like, I would be in bed for weeks with well, for that. the guys in the locker, it's normal. Every, at that, every, by the end of the season, everybody's playing with something. So, it, it's sad to see for the game, but you're happy for Luke uh, to be able to walk away from the game on his own terms, to feel healthy um, and, and still feel proud of, of what he accomplished in the league. Uh, the game will miss him, but offenses, I'm sure, will be pretty happy yeah. not to, to have to think, line up. Some, I saw somebody say to think you would have went into the 2019 season. Luke Keekley was possibly a candidate to be defensive player of the year, and Andrew Luck was probably a candidate to be offensive player of the year. Guys that have been would have been in those conversations, and both a year later will we won't see him out there. Football. But what you will see is a lot of new faces on sidelines wearing headsets as the head coach. Mike McCarthy with the Cowboys. Uh, we have Rivera with the Redskins. Uh, Rule with the Panthers. And Stefanski with the Browns. So uh, And Joe Judge Joe with Judge. the Giants. Man. I was saving that Get one for right. you. Trish. Joe Judge Joe with the Judge. Giants. So, He's the man. Yeah, our guy Judge he did it. taking over. Yeah, He did it. I'm yeah. so proud of him. Let's, yeah. break down, let's break down these hires. Okay. So Stefanski goes to the Browns. Mm -hmm. Browns being the Browns, it was reported that they wanted Shalera from the 49ers, a defensive coordinator, or Stefanski. But they wanted to make the hire Sunday night. So as all of us know. Oh, it came down to those two? So all of us, yeah, they kind of kicked our guy Josh out, I guess. This is reports. I don't know if it's true. Yeah. I'm like everybody else. I go on Twitter and I read what the guys mm -hmm. tweet. But they wanted to make the hire Sunday night. So you can't hire the winner of the game. So the rumor is, Cleveland wanted whoever lost the game. Mm -hmm. Richard Sherman didn't like that. He went out, he tweeted, wow, wow. Because if you watch the game, the 49ers defense was incredible against the Vikings offense. <laughs> 49ers have a lot of good players over there. But I thought that was a very interesting note, and it fell in line with the whole Cleveland being Cleveland. Whether it works out for them, we'll see. Did you, now, did you hear the report that our boy Josh went in there with a full uh, presentation on how what Cleveland would need to do to win. No, Did you hear this? I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, I'm just like you. I read what's out the there. Rumors, yeah. I I use this little thing called Reddit. I don't know if mm -hmm. you use Reddit. That's very popular. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's for younger people, but I use it too. <laughs> and you know, there was a report that Josh actually did a, a really beautiful intensive presentation on what it would take to turn them around and they basically said uh well hold on a minute we already know what we need to do uh, mm -hmm. that's what they said too with the new coach they have a lot of conditions where they want him to they came out and said that wasn't true uh, so we'll okay. say how he had to turn in the game report the and meet with the uh, and, yeah, game plans and all of that oh, but the one good thing the fact that they told josh that was he gets to return to new england yeah so. We'll get to have our guy McDaniels back in Very the Very excited. And back Love on the sideline. So. I'm going to rock my boots on all night, though. Yeah, so yeah. that's one less coach to replace, obviously, with Joe Judge moving on uh, to the Giants. Another special teams coach takes the jump, which I think from an organization standpoint, why not? Your special teams coach interacts with everybody on the offense, everybody on the defense. Yeah. He has to be Even able, the quarterbacks. Tom yes. Brady's the backup holder. He has to be able to adjust at a moment's notice because, hey – Jason McCourty's down for this game, so now this person's up. So you've just lost this guy. So they're always moving pieces around to try to fit who's there, who's not there. And you think about it, as a special teams coach, you have to motivate guys. Everybody wants to play offense and defense. But sometimes, especially here in New England, you get – last year I was here, you get the 10-year vet that now he's coming over. It's like, hey, we're going to need you to contribute on special teams. And you get the first-round draft pick from wherever that he comes in. It's just like, hey, we're going to need you on special teams. So I think it's very interesting to see how Judge is going to do. Uh, every, like we always said, a very detail-oriented coach to see how he'll do there. One thing we can say about Judge, 
he nailed the opening press conference. He did. He did. Oh, if you if you're a Giants fan, you watch that, you're like, I want this guy. He he already said it. But the things he said about coaching is something that I feel like any and every coach, whether you're coaching yeah. little kids in Pop Warner all the way up to the pros, should because I've been in a lot of organizations where the number one thing is pride. So it's just like I've literally heard offensive coaches tell quarterbacks, my system is proven. I just need to get the guys to run my system. Mm. How about you work with the guys you have and figure out strength? So all he said was the <laughs> most basic about coaching, but I feel like that is overlooked at coaching yeah. at every single level. So I, I, I agree with appreciated you. appreciated that. Uh, McCarthy, mm. was he going to sign with the Cowboys? We don't know. Spends a night at Jerry Jones' house. Signs of the Cowboys. They say that's <laughs> how you seal the deal. I mean. What happens at Jones' Jones, house? I don't know. That's Nobody knows. Day. All we know is he signed. Seals so deals. Whatever happened, it was a good time for McCarthy <laughs> at, at, uh, at Jerry Jones' house. Yes. Um, but I would imagine Jerry Jones, Cowboys, one of the highest, you know, yeah. br- most money franchise in all the sport. Yeah. Show me the J- money. Jerry Jones knows how to take care of people. Yes, we sir. could all imagine that. Maybe yeah. not Dak Prescott yet. But McCarthy is in. Yeah. Uh, rule to the Panthers, college coach, making a ton of money coming Show in. Show me that money. Coming in, starting strong. So, so rule, rule, the Giants wanted him and the Panthers wanted yeah. him. He said, whoever pays me the most. Yeah. And Suppose he, he went back to the Giants and said, listen, got these guys over here seven years, 60 mil. What you want to do? They said they weren't willing. They weren't willing to make that type of offer. So stays in Carolina. And then uh, Rivera signing in Washington. The only minority coach of the bunch uh, to be able to get hired. Uh, shout out to – I've heard great things about Ron Rivera. Just we said that in the last episode, just as a person, uh, beyond just football, the way he treats guys and with his faith and beliefs and all of that. So And he um, has an uphill battle in Washington. Yes. Well, let's talk that. about that. So the Redskins, <laughs> my God. Well, I mean, honestly, I think that you know, from an ownership perspective, there needs to be – consideration of just let's just call it quits right (laughs) if you've got nothing more to add you know how how long has it been so you know if daniel snyder wants me to buy the team i'll do it you're all in we've heard uh, uh, double coverage breaking news trish kennedy wants to buy the washington redskins mainly so i can rename the team (laughs) (laughs) i want to rename that team so bad i mean but when you what trish just said you've seen so many former players talk about Washington, and they don't talk about the coaching, they don't talk about the player. They say ownership is bad, yeah. and that's the problem. They said the GM and ownership is bad. Like you said, I don't know if Rivera, like it's an uphill battle. If yeah. ownership's bad, yeah. I don't know if you have a shot. For sure. I don't know that if you very, have a shot. Very true. So I love Ron. I think he's great. Uh, watched his work, but I'm he's, sorry, man. He's in for a fight. Good luck. Good luck, man. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, Bill Cowher going to the uh, Hall of Fame. Found out on TV, which was pretty cool. Added another dimension. Seeing Troy Aikman uh, really happy and proud uh, for Jimmy Johnson. So really cool uh, to see those guys uh, going cry? to the Hall of Fame. Nah, I didn't. I cried. I didn't. I, didn't I, get so. I was happy, though, because I we both grew up a Cowboys fan. Yeah. So we rooted for the Cowboys in the 90s. And I still remember my rookie year, Jimmy Johnson came to visit training camp, and Bill had him speak to the team. And that's when I realized the NFL was real. Jimmy Johnson said, every player here is not the same. You will all get treated fairly, but you will not get treated the same. (laughs) The best players will get treated a little better probably than some other guys. That's just the way it goes. He said, I didn't treat Michael Irvin the same way as I treated the 53rd man on the roster. And I remember sitting there as a rookie like. Makes sense. Well, I better try to be a good player because I want the good treatment. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So much nah, respect to those cool. two guys. They were, as for us growing up, they were both coaching. Yeah. Um, and, you know, growing up. We're old, but we didn't get a chance to play, to uh, compete against Bill Cowell or Jimmy Johnson. No. So, yeah. no. That's not, why we're still playing. Not that old. There's not many <laughs> guys still playing that compete against yeah. those guys. Um, a little bit of community outreach. Me and Dev hosted a premiere of the movie Just Mercy uh, with Jamie Foxx and Michael B. Jordan uh, right here um, at Patriot Place. Uh, really good movie. Uh, enjoyed it. 
um, talking about um, a lawyer who graduates from Harvard, moves down to Alabama. Brian, Brian Stevenson. Yes, uh, decides to take on uh, cases of, uh, of guys that are incarcerated on death row uh, who couldn't uh, have uh, representation, couldn't pay for he it. He called it the Equal Justice Initiative. Yes, and um, was able to get a guy that was in there for, uh, for murder who didn't do it. Uh, he served, I think at that time, ended up serving maybe, maybe six or eight years. Yeah. And ends up getting them uh, acquitted for it. And uh, a really, a really, really good movie. Um, definitely provoked some thought and just to see uh, what it was about. So we enjoyed that. Invited some teammates out. Uh, had a good time getting a chance to see that. I would say it was a, it was a, when your season doesn't end the way you want, like we lost on Saturday and then we went and saw this movie on Monday and it was a lot of guys that got to come out and check out the movie. And if you haven't seen the movie, you definitely need to see the movie. Um, just Yesterday, I got to actually um, go and talk a little bit about the movie and talk about what we do uh, from a player's perspective in a community to a movie theater full of judges all throughout Massachusetts, Supreme, Supreme Court, state level, local. Like I just got to talk to them just about um, people. And I was I was so blown away that they wanted to go watch this movie and how many of them are so interested and equal justice and doing the right things in their courtroom. So um, I think this movie definitely opened some eyes. And once again, it, it continues the conversation uh, just about equality and, and doing the right thing. So well, and we know that there is not equal justice. Exactly. We know that there, there are too many statistics out there, too many stories. We know it's not true. And, um, you know, one of the things I don't know if you guys have ever talked about Colin Kaepernick, mm -hmm. but. Yep. You know, you can say a lot of things, but he really did uh, wake up a lot of people. Mm -hmm. For sure. He really did. And I mean, he paid a dear price for it. Yep. For sure. And I feel bad for him. But on the other hand, uh, people need to wake up mm -hmm. to it. And um, so I think that's great. What? Give me the name of the movie again. Just Mercy. Just Mercy. Yep. Yeah. Got it. Yep. We won't talk too much about it because we want you to check it out. We don't want to ruin it. Uh, but it is a really good movie. Really good movie. Let's get into a little football. want to start out with thanking Trish and a lot of the fans out there for supporting us with the Patriots throughout the year. Didn't end the way uh, we wanted. For me, I wasn't used to that. I was used to being a Patriot, winning <laughs> Super Bowls. So it was definitely a different experience. Uh, never lost in a wild card. Had never played in a wild card. So uh, a lot of mixed emotions down Jay the Mack stretch. J-Mac was a little crushed. as the first playoff loss first on his playoff resume. Loss. Yeah. Uh, he was before that I mean, currently 3-0. and And he didn't really well, play. I didn't play. I was inactive. Can, but. can we talk about last year just for a minute and, sure. and that play that this <laughs> I'm tired of hearing man. about the play, Trish. He probably <laughs> wants to hear about it. Can, can, I mean, he so made a one of the play. things when I every time I go back and watch it, because I've watched it many times because he really <laughs> did save us. You do know that. But that was that was that uh, training or instinct when you went for that arm? Um, training becoming instinct, I would say. You're always taught a lot of times you watch a game. You're like, why won't that guy just turn around? Mm -hmm. And as DBs, you're taught. Hey, when I get close enough to the guy, I can turn and look for the ball. When I'm not close enough, I'm just going to play his hands when he goes up to the ball. So okay. we talk about it. We do it. We do drills. Because you go on for the other arm, it, it may not have played out that way. Yeah. He may have kept that ball. Yeah, it was literally, to be honest, it was just going for when he put his arms up, the closest thing to me of just trying to reach across with my longest arm okay. uh, to be able to get there. So. All right. So. Yeah, happy I got there. Uh, thank you. But earlier in the game, I told him to go there. If he would have went there a little earlier, he'd have an interception. Yeah, well, then he would have really been a hero. <laughs> Might have won MVP. <laughs> won the game. MVPs don't matter. Anymore. True. Hey, that's right. True. We won the game. Shout out Julian Elderman, our MVP. 53. We won't talk about him getting arrested and all of that. He did not get arrested. Yeah. Oh, he didn't? No. Okay. So. Do you want to hear the real story? No, not on air. We don't want to. <laughs> okay. don't, yeah. It wasn't bad. Yeah, but the fans will be too happy, and we don't want to yeah. tell on we can't. Air. We can't give that type of inside exclusive. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, didn't finish strong. Tennessee Titans, Derrick Henry um, could, could not. We ended up stopping. He's too big. Ended up stopping. He needs to go play defense and <laughs> end or something. That's was, the problem. What happened? How can that guy be that good? I don't know. I don't know. They That's blocked all. us pretty well. And it forced us to arm tackle a 250-pound yeah. 4-5 yeah. 
running what back. What you just said is what they do. They find ways in their blocking schemes to get it. So whereas you may have Kyle Van Noy setting the edge and then coming off the bl- off the block to make a tackle, but you only get one arm on him, and he's just somebody where you need to have a full, full body, body on him to right. slow him down. To just slow him down, and then you need another body to, to make sure But now in the down. second half, you figured it out. Yes. You did a better job. We made adjustments, and we did a, uh, a, didn't score a point uh, offensively in the second That's half. Right. So what did we you did do? Really what was the job. difference? I think we did a better job. We got in a little different of a front. And then we did a better job of just controlling our gaps so that when he got the ball, he couldn't just run straight downhill. Yes. We made him change direction, and then it slowed him down. Because once he got going full speed, it was just tough to bring him down. But right. once we made him kind of change direction a little bit, okay. it helped. But he still finished with over 200 yards of offense. It's yeah. insane. So, it's um, insane. And he followed it up by going for another yeah. 200 yards of offense. So. Oh, can we but, talk about that Baltimore game? Yeah, before we get before into Baltimore, we we'll okay. finish the wild card. Houston beats Buffalo uh, in the wild card. Buffalo jumped out. Yeah, which was a really Trick good play, open and draw. Which was a really good game. Uh, just back and forth a little bit. Um, Deshaun Watson just mm. showed up and showed out uh, down the stretch of that game. And Buffalo is a team yeah. in our division that's really, yeah. I mean, they're built on the run, Blue has a collar. quarterback with a big arm, plays good defense. Uh, that was the, t- the playoff games have been really good so far. I so. would say wild card weekend was better than division. Yes, weekend. I would agree. Because then you had Seattle and Philly went right down to the wire. Uh, DK Metcalf catches a big goal. And he at opened the end that of the game. game up. Yep. And then, and then you had the Minnesota yeah. Vikings um, and New Orleans, New Orleans game. And I expected where, New Orleans. To, I, I honestly felt this was going to be a year where we might have gotten a, a Drew Brees Super mm-hmm. Bowl, at the very least, NFC Championship game, possibly going against uh, an Aaron Rodgers or, or going, I mean, going against San Francisco. But Drew Brees is, is Drew Brees and Tom Brady bounced in a wild card of this year's playoff. Mm-hmm. Forget that. First time in 17 years. Yes. That the champ, the uh, AFC Championship, the AFC Championship will not include Peyton Manning, Ben Roethlisberger, or Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's dominance. Mm-hmm. Flacco has to be in there somewhere too, but he's probably played against one of them. No, true. Yeah, he played mm-hmm. against one of them. True. That's impressive. Can we go back to Baltimore? Yeah, yes. we're um, on to Baltimore. Now. We're on to Baltimore. Oh wait, forget about yeah, on to Baltimore. I meant Buffalo. Sorry. Oh. Oh. So I'm a little bit scared of them because they're really about good. Their future. Yeah. Yeah. What have they got? Ninety million in cap space. Yeah, well, I they, didn't know that. And they've got forty-eight returning. I would imagine because yeah. their team's young. Their team and is young. New free That's agent. insane. And they still haven't had Look to pay. Trish their, doing her research. They still haven't had to That's pay insane. their quarterback. That's insane. Well, I do my research on people that scare me. Yeah, they're one. <laughs> they're one. The way their I'm team a is built. They're them. built. They're built to definitely be in the playoffs for the next couple of years, and I would imagine at some point have a legit chance for a Super Bowl run. Yeah. And and. And the other team that really scares me in our division, Miami. right, is Miami. Miami. Flo and knows what he's gonna, doing down there. Yeah. He knows, and he's got he that does. nice heat to try to try to attract people to come down to Miami. Flo <laughs> is flowing. <laughs> you said <laughs> Buffalo has ninety. I think Miami has one hundred and twenty million dollars. Yeah. In cash it's space. insane. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. I'm sure they'll be calling every New England free agent. Yeah. <laughs> Will be interesting. We won't get into free agency just yet. Divisional round, Tennessee knocks off Baltimore, um, which was a game that I think a lot of people just did not expect. A lot of people, I think, felt like this could be a good game and Tennessee possibly could upset these guys, but not like that. I mean, they came out and they just took it to Baltimore. And shout out Tennessee's defense did a great job. I mean, I think Lamar Jackson threw 50 passes. Yeah. Like, his numbers look great leaving the game. He had over 300 yards passing, over 100 yards rushing. rushing. But a lot of it was in two minute drill. Yeah, like and just uh, just Tennessee just completely controlled that game and Derrick Henry. They just fed him. They just mm-hmm. fed him. And I know Earl had a lot of people got on Earl for saying we were, looked uninterested. And I remember saying to myself that week there were some plays where we didn't look too great tackling Derrick Henry. But they found out that next round that there was a reason that some of them plays didn't look too good because Derrick Henry is a beast. Uh, and I like Earl's approach after the game. He didn't even I don't I didn't see all of it, but I just saw he said, "Well, I guess the Drake curse is alive. Like mm-hmm. football, you win some, you lose some." And shout out to the Titans who are, are continuing to advance. So yeah. So were we hoping that Kansas City got back to the AFC Championship, or were you guys rooting for Houston? I was rooting for Houston. I was rooting for Houston. And Houston did a one heck of a job of jumping out early, 24. 24 to nothing in the first quarter? Are you Houston, kidding? Houston, we have a problem. Oh, my God. And his name God. is Patrick Mahomes. And Travis Kelsey. Yes. It, oh. I mean, the day came down to Houston came in with a game plan to play man-to-man defense. 
and they did a pretty good job on Tyreek Hill, pretty good job on Watkins, pretty good job on Robinson, but they could well, not Robinson did a good top, job on They Robinson. could not stop Travis Kelsey. Mm-hmm. He could was not. three touchdowns. I think 10 100, catches, 134 yards. Just unstoppable. Corners on him, safeties but on him. But come on, guys. 24 to nothing. Got to yeah. protect and, and by the way, was it? It was twenty-four to nothing, and they did a fake punt. Oh, yeah. What the? Billy Billy O got a lot of. He got. I a lot like of, the fake punt call no. though. Oh wow. No. I'm just saying you're playing Not against when you're a team. Tw- up twenty-four points. But for Kansas City, being up twenty-four is like well, being if, up if seven. Bill O'Brien I mean, I needs any help. That. He should call me because I would have <laughs> definitely said we are not running a trick play. When we're Billy up O, call points. Trish. Billy O. <laughs> Green Bay beat Seattle. Another good game. What I took away from that Green Bay-Seattle game, Russell the, Wilson is the real deal. Oh, like, and also probably you should double Devontae Adams. Without a doubt, especially mm-hmm. when it's got to have a game on the okay. line situation. We got to put two on him. Yeah, but Russ, I, you, I agree with just, you. I mean, he was just making it happen to keep – uh, his team in the game. Uh, that was a re- that was a fun one to what watch. What a great guy. Yeah, yeah. Have you met Russell Wilson? Yeah, yeah. We played against him in college in a bowl game. He ended up getting hurt in the game. Oh. In the third it was, quarter. And it was the only reason, only we, reason won. we won. So you know where he's from? My Mm-mm. backyard, my where I grew up in Richmond. Oh, okay. In Virginia, he went to St. Christopher's. Okay. okay. Yeah. Shout out Russ. So yeah. So when Brady retires, you would love for Russ to come to New England. Uh, couple years, when, couple years. When yeah, Tom yeah, Brady is done, 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 and I mean put a fork in it, done. Oh, I'd love to have Russell. Okay. <laughs> you could tell Trish doesn't want to talk too much about Tom Brady being done. Yeah. True New Englander. San Fran beats Minnesota uh, in a game where they just ran the air out of the ball, just back and forth, really run, 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 game, run, right? run, game, run, run. Yeah, it wasn't. The game was ugly. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. The, it was probably the least straight game dominance. I enjoyed. But dominance. yeah, for sure. But Richard Sherman did tell y'all. Stop talking about him being a zone corner in this corner and that corner. He said, I've dominated since I've been in the league. Can't, He's a league of interceptions. Can't cheat the man in. in that. Whether you want to call him whatever type of corner he is, mm-hmm. you got to say call him one, one of the best. best to do it. So you got you to gotta give him his credit. What about down. Mr. Uh, Garoppolo? Jimmy G did. He came out there slinging the rock. Jimmy, Jimmy G, G had a good game, protected the ball, did a good he job. He had like 100 yards passing. I'm just – but he won the game. Yeah, he, okay. They yeah. won. Yeah, he but did you know, solid. But I, mean, I think I think we'll un, I think we'll see Jimmy G unleash this week against Green Bay. Yeah, I'm just saying we didn't say Tannehill had a great game. He had 80 yards passing. His, I, I don't know. I mean, we haven't seen Jimmy G unleash really. Not really. We've seen. Yeah, I don't know if he a, has an unleash. A little. <laughs> well, he we'll does in other circumstances, but maybe not with football. <laughs> We shall see. <laughs> so, what Jimmy G so has. do you have? Do you have Green Bay or San Fran going on to the Super Bowl? God, I hope it's Green Bay. Okay. And, and who I want we? Aaron to get a chance. He's had one, right? I yeah, know. I want him one. to have another chance. Want to see him win? And who you got, Kansas City or Tennessee? Tennessee. Hold on now, just so you know. So back uh, before Tennessee beat us, mm-hmm. right? You know, Las Vegas, people can bet there and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Well, so I put a bet. Um, you know, this is after they beat us, and they were going into the game uh, with Baltimore. Baltimore. Mm-hmm. I put a $100 down that Tennessee's going to go all the way and win the Super Bowl. And if I win, it's $2,500 <laughs> for 100 That's right. So you got Tennessee winning the whole thing. And then they beat, they beat Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then my husband asked if he could buy half my bet. Yeah. He wanted to give me $50. Did you let Tom in or not? No. Dang. No Hell love no. for my man Tom. <laughs> who you got? Who you got in the Super Bowl? And who do you have winning it? I'm going with Tennessee and San Fran. Tennessee and San Fran. Wow. And I'm going Good. Tennessee. I can't go against my guy, Lowe. Yeah. But uh, if San Fran gets in there too, my man Kay Wan, I'll know the two slot corners on both teams. So. Wow. I'm going with Andy Reid winning his first Super Bowl. Not a bad what's in there. I like to I'm, believe if we if we didn't beat Kansas City in Kansas City last year, I think they would have won the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. For sure. I don't know if you get a do over at that. For sure. Mm-mm. Sometimes it's yeah. your year and you don't I just get can't it. pick Tennessee. I want low Wesley Williams, Jarrell Casey's to win the Super Bowl because I, I I enjoy playing with like Wood and Case. But Tennessee cut me, so I can't say I want Tennessee to win the Super Bowl. It just is what it is. You don't want it for the city of Nashville? I don't care about the city of Nashville. Oh, Damn, no. he used to love y'all. No, no, that's bad. No, I love Nashville. It's yeah, awesome. I love Nashville. He still but, owns I'm house. Be, but yeah, I'm going to be a little spiteful and say, yeah. You got a ring. Right. I know. 
You got the ring. And, uh, and to be honest with you, when they get, when their game comes on, I'm gonna be rooting like hell. Yeah, his time. wife. His wife texted uh, the group chat with she my wife, and she was like, "She's still spiking." She was like, "He's in here yelling and screaming for the Titans like they didn't cut us." She still uh, I was like, I was like, well, her perspective, let is, it go. You know, her perspective let is totally it go. different. The wise perspective of this is totally <laughs> different. Because for us as players, you get cut, you move on, you go to the next locker room, you play, you enjoy it, you meet some new guys, you have fun. The wise, for the wise is just like, oh, yeah. all right, now I got to pick a new school. Now I got to find a new babysitter. Like it's a whole nother world. I got to figure out when the moving and trucks come that in and all your of that. Wife, so. You know, now that you're. His wife is in New England and mm, team mom. His and, wife's yeah. already told told me that she'll be pretty mad if we're not back here. Yeah, that's good. She don't. I make what, sure of that. She don't know. She doesn't I know. I take what care of my do. boys. Mm. Yeah. You guys are really important to me. We always appreciate it. Yeah, I, sure. I love you guys. Trisha's suite is the hangout spot for all New England wives. <laughs> You go in there any any home game and fifty. You'll see. The, yeah. Oh yeah. She's hosted. Episode. She's hosted a bunch of celebrities too. <laughs> 50 Cent sent you a birthday, right? He did. He sent, he sent me a case gift. of champagne. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, Trish lived a good life. Yeah, I do. I have a good life. It is uh, crazy to talk about this next topic that yeah. Penn State is going. Uh, so have you read it? Uh, have you haven't read the stuff that's gone on? I read some of it. So a former player, I can't, I can't remember his name. A former player has brought on a federal lawsuit against James Franklin, the university, and another member on the, on the football team. So he names this guy on the football team and I think three other guys, and I don't watch much college football, but multiple guys of the, of the ones he named are potential like first-round draft picks. So he's not just naming oh, really? Joe Schmo from, from yeah, the uh, Nifty Lions. Serious. So the claims are cr- – like it, it's – it was, so it was basically hazing. He's saying when he got to the team, the coaches were aware of this hazing that was going on. Said guys would come and they, they um, uh, restrain guys, hold them down, and then guys would do humping motions and say to them, I'm going to Sandusky you. And um, crazy, I've heard hazing stuff go on like that amongst different teams. Not to say whether it's right or wrong, but locker rooms are all a little bit different. I've heard some kind of crazy stuff. But... He goes as far as to say that within that, that players would hold guys down, hold him down. I guess he's specifically talking about himself. And then another guy would take his genitals out and put them on his face. And then at another time would take his genitals out and put them on his buttocks. Mm. That is just like, now we'll see as the story unfolds, you know what I mean, how much and how, because uh, like they said there's already been guys within the team that have said, like, that none of it's true. He's a guy that ended up quitting on the team, and now he's going this route. I have no idea, but that that was kind of It report. sucks for Penn State because you don't need any of this. You don't need, you don't any, need any, any of Any school, it just sounds. Well, especially Penn State. Yeah, like, for sure. You don't need any of this. Mm-mm. For sure. Let's so. be as far removed from Sandusky yeah. forever. As a federal lawsuit. So, I mean, it's, this this thing is pretty serious. So. We were, we're having a good time on the show, so we'll let Penn State be Penn State. Yeah. Best friend went to Penn State, so I'll be I'll be getting on him about this. Yeah, Odell Beckham, happy to his to his school. He won. had a great time. He's an alum. The they won, and he didn't care just about himself. He gave to the players. He did what the NCAA needs to do. Mm-hmm. Give him some he money. He paid the players on the field, handing out money. Shout out LSU. Try to cover it up. Said it was monopoly money, but of course the legend Joe Burrow says it was real hundreds. I'm not a student athlete. And I he took probably, it. I'm sure he spent that money on some good stuff that <laughs> night in New Orleans. So shout out OBJ going when in there I with When I first energy. saw it, my first takeaway was, dang, the cameras are there. But then second, just the whole recap of Odell's night at the national championship was he had himself a great time from dancing in the locker room, dapping up fans. <laughs> I saw him slap the police officer in the locker room on the butt who was in there getting after a guy for lighting a cigar, like just slap him on the butt and then started yelling hey, like, we, we, we won. We, can we get that officer out of there? Yeah, We're having a good time either. in there. We'll get him out of there. Time. We just won a championship. But we'd rather the police officer than the NCAA. We don't like the NCAA, yeah, so, so keep them out. Yeah. All just, right, so let's yeah. talk about Odell. Mm-hmm. Is he a good player? Yes. Oh, one of the best. One of the best, right? One of the best. You're going to get him to the wing list? Could we use him? You can always use, like Bill says, you can always use good players. Well, I got to wait. I got to wait till I, I'm back here to say, <laughs> if not, he could go to the team I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, and, and we need you back here. To, please keep playing football. A, B, A, B, Antonio Brown was in the news again. Oh. And that's all we're going to say. 
A B yes, was in I the news. I agree. A B was in the news again. Okay. Uh, speaking of looking like you just said, early look at free agency, Dev just finished up playing a decade in one uniform uh, for the New England Damn, Patriots. That made me sound Sounds old. good, right? Yeah. No, it sounds good. A decade, three championships, five Super Bowls. It's perfect. Yeah. You know what I mean? Pro Bowls, all pros, all of that good stuff. Thanks, man. Come March 18th. My wife's birthday. Yep. Dev already has said he will be playing football again. How does free is this a- only about me or is it about all free agents? Yeah, I'm not gonna okay, I'm not yeah. gonna ask you where you're going. I, how does free agency work? Like for the average fan at home, mm, it's just like, question. hey, like Deb, you're gonna be a free agent. Are you coming back? Like it doesn't just quite work like that. How yeah, does free you, agency work? You don't have to ask Tom Brady or Drew Brees. Like there's no reason to ask any of those guys because no one really knows what's gonna happen. And I would say most teams really don't even think about free agency for a couple of weeks. Really, I mean, I would say. The beginning of March is when they even yeah. get to free agency because the season ends, you know, differently for each team. But when the season ends, you have you have the combine, you have all star games, you have all of this stuff that the teams mm-hmm. have their whole front right. office jump fully in mm-hmm. and are doing that. So I think for us as players, we're unwinding. We're going on vacations with our families. We're spending time with significant others. You know, if you're not if you're not in any of those boats, you're just getting away. You're going to have some fun. You're trying to relieve the stress of the season. Mm-hmm. So honestly, most guys, I mean, you think about free agency because you think about like where you could go. Will you be on your team again? But like, you don't really have time to think about because there's nothing to really think about. You know? Yeah. And for guys that now, when you've reached, you've played out the 16 games of playoffs. Do you kind of owe it? Not not you specifically, but for you understand guys that now once you make it through the season, you haven't been able to strike a deal with a team. For a lot of guys, it's just, all right, free agency starts March 18th. I've already made it this far. Hey, I owe it to myself to let me see what else is out there. You know what I mean? And for a lot of guys, you're older, it's a little bit different. But for a lot of guys that are are younger and you're hitting your prime, the Kyle Van Noys and a lot of guys across the league, the Joseph Toonies, it's just like you don't really know what your market will be. And just as a competitor and as a business person, you kind of owe it to yourself. It's just like, hey, let me see what my numbers are. And as an organization, the Patriots, which they do often, they'll let a guy hit free agency and say, all right, hey, what's the market out there? What's it looking like for you? And then come back to us and maybe we're able to figure something out. Or if not, we can give a handshake and say, hey, we both appreciate the services, but the time has come to move on. How does free agency relate to business? You obviously do a bunch of business deals. Uh, What what would you say are some of the similarities? Well, I mean – negotiations are part of any business Mm -hmm. and so you guys are the talent let's be clear right um you are what sells the seats you sell the seats Mm -hmm. it's not anything but that it's your performance on that field Mm -hmm. and who you are uh and yes it's your personalities fans love players of personalities um and and your winning record mm-hmm. fans love to watch their teams win True. although we know from buffalo they'll keep going even if you lose <laughs> <laughs> oh i'm sorry did i say that out loud <laughs> and so but you know it is a business and you guys know very well there are 32 owners in the nfl and that's a big time business mm-hmm. and you're part of that business and when the time comes it's up to you to take care of yourself and your families and negotiate the best deal you can. Now, all that said, there's a lot of reasons why you could take less money to get another ring. Because we know that these rings, that I happen to be very Mm -hmm. fortunate and have two of them Mm -hmm. myself, uh, that these rings represent long-time value for you as you go forward in whatever you're going to do after football. Mm -hmm. You know, you show up somewhere and say, I was a football player. I was an NFL player. Well, what did you did you win any Super Bowls? That's almost the first question. Mm-hmm. No, I never won any Super Bowls. Oh, okay, well, see you later. <laughs> but you walk in and say, "I'm a three time Super Bowl champ." You're going to get speaking engagements. You're going to get you know a lifetime of income after that's over. So, is it worth taking a pay cut to get another ring? Hell yeah, it is. Mm. So, uh, so what we what we need to do right now is we need to get Bill on the phone, and they have the conference you in when they're calling the Devin McCourties, the Kyle yeah. Van Noys, yeah. the Joe Tooney's. Probably yeah. want to start with Tom Brady though. 
Yeah. Well, I guess and we he has six Tom. of them, so. Hey, man. <laughs> might need a different No, might Tom, need a different strategy. Tom Brady <clears throat> wants seven rings. Yeah. There's no doubt. Yeah. Definitely. No For doubt. Sure. Uh, he's told it. me that himself. We heard it here first. Tom, you got to take less. Well, you... Everybody Seven. in the Patriots knows you take a little bit less. I'm not talking about a lot here. Mm -hmm. Just a little just bit. A little, just a just little. A little uh, so that, you know, Bill feels good. You, you feel, feel good. good. We all feel Your good. family feels good. Everybody's good. Right? And we're, we're back rolling again for this number seven. There we go. You heard it. Cause free agency in a nutshell. There it and is. Th right there, there it is. is. That's a free agency there wrap up right there. There it is. Um, Zion Williamson making his debut uh, versus Spurs on the 22nd. Excited to see him. I know he's excited. January 22nd? Yeah. Football season will still be going on. Nobody cares. Oh, I'm excited, though. He's, he's excited. <laughs> he was just falling asleep last week on the bench he watching was. the game. Yeah. So uh -oh. I mean, he's ready to get in the there. The NFL would love if he decides to hang it up and come play tight end, yeah. too, though. Oh, boy. Uh, speaking of, uh, of, of, of football, though, Tyquan Underwood, uh, an old New England Patriot, college roommate of mm. ours, going back to Rutgers to join the, the coaching staff. So oh, if there's cool. any young high school kids really good at receiver, <laughs> Tyquan Underwood will be, will be contacting Underwood, so you. He's the flat top yeah. guy. Flat top. Flat top. So funny story, because I was at the Super Bowl in Houston, mm -hmm. and he was there, and they brought him out there and then cut him. That was, that was Indianapolis. Oh, it was Indy. That's yep, right. Yep. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yep. Sorry, I night, got the wrong. Night, night before the I'm game. I'm sorry, everyone. I've been to so many Super Bowls. It's so <laughs> hard to keep track. It's a good problem to have. Night before the and, game. Yes. That was rough I on was my guy. I was on the elevator with him, mm -hmm. and he had been crying. It was his life. You know, you forget. These young men, this is their whole, mm -hmm. their dream, mm -hmm. their life. Especially being, that was the first time. Both of us being a Super yeah. Bowl. So and we were I all college him, roommates. So I was out there oh, with his family. I loved and we were all him. There. But now that, that young man was so thin. <laughs> his arms, his legs were this big. Uh, I'm not kidding. Yeah. But his flat top. Mm -hmm. How high did he have it? This he still, high? still has it. This high, right? Mm -hmm. yep. With the flat? It's oh, my God. Still has it. It's so good. It's a recruiting it's so gem probably right now for him. Good. So, I love him. Yeah, he's doing well. That's our guy. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's represent the ladies. Collective bargaining. The NFL is about to be in one. Maybe we can take a page. The WNBA was able to strike an agreement. A lot of things moving in their favor. Max players, $500,000 yep. as they travel on the road. They get their own rooms. They get their own rooms. Pay mm. jumped up like three That's times the amount. And I think the biggest thing is the women will get their pay during uh, maternity, maternity leave. leave so. Which is huge. Oh, that's I mean, awesome. I, 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 what do you mean I, get I, their own rooms? They didn't have their own no, rooms? No, what? Yeah. yeah. The, 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 the women, the WNBA, like, they were, it was bad. It oh, was bad. God. Amount of pay and all of that. Well, you guys get fought. your own rooms, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, well when, I was in, when I was in Tennessee. Rookie share, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. when I was in Tennessee. And it, usually most teams, is they have a threshold with it, like maybe years one through three or roommates and somewhere between some guys. When I was in Tennessee, WNBA you could have got one. Girls, you could have got one. Women. Yeah, that's very you know, true. I mean, it's a way smaller yeah. team. It's yeah. 15 women on the team. Yeah. So I'm happy that so they, they were trying to, they that trying that to save so. every penny. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Divisional Fun. round, though, watching Seattle play, the Griffin twins actually got, had, both had a pressure where they both got to Aaron Rodgers and sacked him almost simultaneously. Yeah. Um, how many sacks do you have? I think two or three. Dang, I only have one. Mm. You got to stay where we can get a how sack. How many interceptions did you end with? Five. Five. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought you got a six one. Wow. Oh, you should have had one against Miami. That's dropped. what I thought. I didn't drop one against Miami. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. In the half field, late in the game, where you were tired. And oh, you, in the first Miami yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were calling, and you were calling the defense. Not that second one. Let's yeah. not talk about that game. Yeah. Off season plans, vacations. What you guys got going on? Hell yeah. No longer having, no longer having to attend games. You got anything going on? Where are you going, Dad? Uh, we're going to Disney Cruise in February. <gasps> Oh, yeah. nice. Yep. That's Rose really Disney nice. I get to join along. So oh, I'm you're going together? Yes. yes. Oh, well, that's so cool. Five kids, four adults. Should be a blast. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the Disney cruise now, you can just shuffle those kids into that's the club. I'm, that's mm -hmm. what I'm hearing. That's and then you club. can have that, you know, special one-on-one -on -one time that's, with, that's the, what, with the wife. That's what I'm food. hearing. I might be running from that, though. Yeah. And then maybe another one will come no, along. No way. No way. <laughs> no way. I'm going to Naples. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm I gonna... trained out there for combine. Oh, did you? Mm -hmm. So we're going to stay at the Ritz Carlton. Mm -hmm. Can't go wrong there. I the didn't, I didn't, you didn't, I stay, didn't there. stay there. <laughs> the, you didn't stay at yeah, the Ritz? Oh, you should have stayed there. It's <laughs> nice. 
We're going to stay at the Ritz, the, the really, the real one, the Grand Dame, not the golf one. Wow. You know, there's two Ritz in Naples. There's a golf resort Ritz, which mm -hmm. is nice, but I'm... Mm -mm. I want the Grand Dame. I want the real Ritz. Okay. Should oh, be, yeah. We got the presidential suite. Ooh. <laughs> Miss Trish not playing with I've never been in a presidential suite. You got to, oh, it's nice. You have to come back and tell us how it was. Oh, well. We'll be heading down to the Super Bowl, too. Uh, not we going to the game. To talk about yeah, not going to the game, but just going to hang out. Well, I uh, might be at the Super Bowl. There you go. I might make a quick entrance mm -hmm. on using my heavy metal. Why not? Why not? And, and it's in Miami. You know who's going to be down there. OBJ. Okay. Uh, she hanging out with the stars. Gronk will be down there too. Beach party. Oh, no. Oh, please we got to go to Gronk's there. beach party. You please I didn't think don't. about it before. You might get injured. I was hoping I was going to be playing, but now that I'm not <laughs> playing, I got to hit him up. You got to let us in the beach party. Oh, he's going to let you in. Yeah. Who, uh, yeah. who you got for the Norma Tech comeback of the week? Norma Tech comeback of the week is not a player. We're going with a team. Tennessee Titans mm. started the season two and four. They put Ryan Tannehill in there. Next yeah. thing you know, I'm hoping they're going to Super Bowl 54. But, I mean, can you talk – a team that starts off 2-4, and four, everyone talks about – And them. even within that comeback of the team, Ryan Tannehill is a comeback in himself that we've uh, honored here on we've the We've honored him well. already, yeah. so, yeah. But the Tennessee Titans, even though he was playing well and they almost didn't get in the playoffs. Yeah. They needed people to lose and stuff to get in the playoffs. So now you get Too in the playoffs – And everyone's like, oh, man. Exited us. You know, only the teams that get the bye weeks will end up – This team has a chance to go from the wild card all the way to the Super Bowl. You got to have respect for And what's been for fun is they're hot. Like you just said, they had to win to get in, and they've just carried that momentum. Lost that game, the second to last game, uh, versus yeah. New Orleans at home where they kind of decided to rest Derrick Henry's hamstring, which was a great idea because you saw him the next week going against Houston, ran for, I think it was 180 mm -hmm. yards mm -hmm. against Houston, followed yeah. up with 180 yards against New England, 190 yards uh, versus Baltimore. So I'm, I'm very excited to see um, what he ran for 185 yards versus Kansas City in their matchup during the regular amazing. season. So. Did, did you all mention Mike Rabel at all? No, we haven't. We don't I mean, really know him personally, but he's obviously done a good so job. So Mike Brabel, what an awesome job! Yeah, he. I mean, he's who was their quality slogan? guy got, from good to great, and he they're, got, they're he doing got it this over year. by a ref in the game. I saw that. Oh, really? I didn't see game, that. Yeah, he, looks, on his way down, he's like, "My bad." <laughs> looks like he looks like he needs to uh, maybe get a little more prepared on that side. Get oh, back boy. in the weight room yeah, a little bit. He didn't look like a former, you know. Yeah. Outside linebacker slash tight end. He caught 10 touchdowns here. So. He was amazing, too. Yeah. yeah. One of the best players, really. For sure. For sure. Anyway, who go won, Mike. Who won the weekend? Really runner up for comeback of the week Kansas was the Kansas City, City Chiefs. Down 24, oh, yeah. come win back. Win by 20. In the AFC Down 20, now. win by 20, uh, which insane. was impressive. Yeah. Insane. They That's would not be, supposed to happen. Down they would 20, be the one team 20. in the league, though, you always say they can score. In no time. I think the first 21 points, they scored in like three minutes. Yeah, in the third quarter. Yes. Yeah. Turned it around. So, who lost the weekend? Got to go to Penn State. Um, what mm. they're going through. We'll see what all comes out of it. But just the publicity of it and everything that's gone on. Um, they've definitely uh, lost the weekend. And sorry to the young man that's reporting this. Whatever he went through, obviously, uh, was traumatic in some sense. So, uh, we'll see what comes of that. Mm. But. I think you got some 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 merchandise to hand yeah, out. Yeah, and then finally, the 12 days of Christmas, we will post your Twitter handles on our Twitter feed uh, right after. Man, when we drop the episode, yeah. we'll post it. Um, I can't say all of these all of these Twitter handles. Yeah. Uh, Boston's Logic, uh, Jubs Jr., Kathy Hole, Bones Eleven, J Valdo Valdo Twelve. Um, a Mandy Mason, uh, JLDX three ninety two, oh, PSQLNPLTN, <laughs> <laughs> Diwali underscore Nancy, uh, Ale Alyssa Kennedy ten, oh Kennedy, <laughs> like it. Davy Gray thirteen thirty seven, and Brian Metallo. We'll post those when we drop this episode. You, you guys will see it. You wow. follow all directions. We'll sign these jerseys. Get your addresses. Send them out to you. Sorry we're a little late, but they're still coming. Late's better than never. Thank you, Trish, for joining us. It's been an honor to have you. You support the team and us personally in so many ways, so we definitely appreciate well, having you here on this show. So I just want to say the work that you two do for the Sickle Cell uh, group, that it's amazing. Um, I had no idea uh, what the 
devastation that people go through with that disease. You've really raised awareness a lot. I've told a lot of my uh, friends and, and coworkers about it. And in turn, they've told other people. So we've raised a lot of support for you guys and are very happy to do that. And then also, you know, just the other things that you do uh, on the field, off the field, you know, great men, great dads, great husbands. It's it's amazing. Um, your mom did a great job. Appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Phyllis, love her. Yes. And uh, it's just been a real pleasure knowing you guys and uh, and continuing on with you next year. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Very year. excited. There we go. And if well, you don't know, Zo uh, Trish owns Zooty. Uh, it's a no-code evolution. Check it out. Zooty.com. That's Z-U-D-Y.com. Uh, I was rocking my Zooty hat today, actually. I was out. Oh, pound it, man. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks for the I plug. I appreciate it. I was so, not here for a check plug. Check that out. Oh, we got to. We got to let the people know. We got to let the people know. All right. Well, I, sure. I did found it. There I founded go. Zooty. And uh, it is power. a great company. There we go. We're uh, a pretty amazing tech company. It's our second one in New England. We had one called Back Office. We sold it. And now we're rolling again. Thanks to the help from you guys, the Patriots. Great partnership. Yeah. If you awesome. ever watch a if you ever watch a press conference, look at the backdrop. You'll see a little You'll see on the background. There. For sure. Yeah. Reminder to you guys, YouTube, all you gotta do, iTunes, all you gotta do is search double coverage with the McCordy twins. When you do so, make sure you hit that little button that says subscribe. You and when you do us. it, you look at somebody and you tell them, Mama, we made it. Quick shout out. Thank you to our partners uh, here at Double Coverage, Boston Medical Center, Embrace Kids Foundation, and Norma Tech Recovery System. Thank you guys. Once again, thank Trish for joining us. See y'all next time. We're we'll gonna be come back next week. We're gonna talk about We're gonna the, do this all the way up through, uh, throughout the Super Bowl. Yeah, right? we'll talk about the championship games and we might have a surprise for you down in Miami. See you later. Ooh.